Now, shocking new figures from a range of sources have been published today, revealing the disturbing growth of a two-tier Britain. While some areas of the country are enjoying the fruits of an albeit slow economic recovery, many others are being left behind, leaving their residents jobless and in poverty. New figures from the Office for National Statistics show that almost one in every three households in Glasgow have no one in work, with a similar situation in Liverpool and the valleys of central Wales. And while jobs are being created, according to one think tank, a fifth of British workers earn less than the living wage, a figure arguably necessary for a basic standard of living. And this pressure on household budgets may be having an effect on Britain's children. Almost 80% of school support staff surveyed by the union Unison said they believe pupils were arriving in class hungry. Our social affairs editor, Jackie Long, has been given exclusive access to the video diaries of 2,500 children. And as she reports, one in ten of them are consuming only half the calories of their classmates. This is not a list of snacks or treats. This is the entire day's food intake for one child, one hungry child. Total calories 783, less than half of what a child needs. It's one of over 2,500 food diaries recorded by young school children in London and it reveals one in ten are eating way below the recommended amount for their age. So often when the government talks about children and nutrition, it's all about obesity. But this research isn't about whether children are eating the wrong thing or not getting their five a day. This is about the stark reality of children who simply don't have enough to eat of anything. In Norwich, this lunch club run by volunteers like Lisa is a lifeline for families struggling to feed their children during the long and expensive summer holidays. It's good that we're here, but we shouldn't be here. In, in a country like the UK, we shouldn't be here. Mums know what the best thing to give their children. Any gravy? Maybe. A little bit. A little bit of mint. The families that come here do know what they're doing, and it's not ignorance. They do know the best for their children, and they just can't afford to do it. Annie never thought she'd end up relying on free food to feed her three boys. But after separating from her partner, she had to give up work and is now on benefits. The lunch club helps make a tight budget stretch that little bit further. When I first heard about this lunch club, I, I weren't sure about it. I was pushed by the benefits of the children eating and getting entertainment through the school holidays. Eight-year-old Jade and her ten-year-old sister Shania haven't missed a day of lunch club. The games are great, and the promise of a full meal, a winning combination. Lunch club to me is like really fun because we get lunch, we get to play, we get to do whatever we want, and that's like really fun because we get afters as well. At home, meal times can be a little less reliable. Sometimes we don't have lunch, so we run out of bread and stuff to go in sandwiches so if we don't have money we can't like buy that stuff for lunch and mum always says um my money doesn't grow on trees so we're like we know so it's just a handle with money that's all with money <laughs> back at home and because annie knows the children have had a hot meal at lunch club she can just give them sandwiches for tea. This summer holidays, the lunch club has saved me altogether about 36 meals, so the three children and the days that it's been running. So 36 meals is a lot of money. She knows all about the government's five-a-day health messages. It's just sometimes the numbers don't add up. Tonight, I've, you've got the three children, but I've used one apple, one banana and one satsuma sort of share it out, level out, a bit of everything for them. For Dr Charlotte Evans, who carried out the initial research, it was the children who weren't getting enough of anything who worried her most. So in one of the diaries, the child had missed breakfast completely. They just had a, a sweet drink like Ribena, but no food. Um, and also, at lunchtime, they'd had a jacket potato, but with no filling on it, no beans or cheese, um, although they had had a pudding. And then in the evening, they'd had quite a processed meal, chicken nuggets and chips um, and a sweet drink. 
So quite a poor quality diet that day, which if it was just a one-off wouldn't really be of great concern. But if that was the kind of diet that they were having regularly, missing meals and not eating a, a wide variety of foods, then it could definitely be of concern. Many of the children who seek refuge here at Kids Company in London know only too well what it feels like to have an empty stomach. The charity deals with vulnerable children with many problems, but hunger is increasingly one of the biggest. They now feed 3,000 children a week and rising. So like something off Doctor Who? And they run special veggie monster workshops to help them learn more about food. I am an evil vegetable monster. Just over 85% of our children are reliant on us for their main meal in the evening. And when school is closed and there's no access to school lunches, we see the desperation in children who are reliant on school lunches as one of their main meals. When I eat grapes, I like, I take it one by one and I peel all the skin. Yeah, yeah, and then I eat it. You do that because the skin's quite bitter, isn't it? Children go to school and they get educated about five a day, vegetables, this is what you should eat, and then they go back home and they see that there isn't even money to have one of those things. You know, and the point is, we have a discrepancy between what we say families should eat and the resources we provide for them to be able to do that. Annie, like many in and out of work, is finding exactly that. With benefits and wages frozen or barely rising and costs spiralling well ahead of them, even providing the basics for her family is becoming harder all the time. I'm worried that the prices of everything's going up and up. It's going to be more of a regular thing. My income support's not going to go up till next April when everyone else's goes up, and it's only going to go up by a couple of quid. Whereas my food shop is going up at a visible rate of £10 a month. I'm seeing the money of it increase. Despite all the cuts and changes I've made, it's got to the point where something else has got to give. And with the winter coming up, I've then got to find the extra, like I said, the electric gas and electric for the heating. What will give then, Annie? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And though they're still young, Jade and Shania know that sometimes what gives is lunch. Money is important for um, food because if you run out of food and you don't have any money, what are you going to live on? But when you get hungry, like after an hour when you're hungry, your belly starts rumbling. <laughs>